This anime is shameless for these Hakare scenes. I think I know what scenes you're talking about, Chibi. Let's see what he got to say. I think it's become very clear just how shameless Hakari is in this anime. Yeah. And I feel like anyone that is animating her, like any staff member that is working on this anime when they have a scene for her, it's very clear <laughs> that they just... Look at the face, bro. Come on. Come on. I mean, the captions, the subtitle literally saying, are we really allowed to air this? And yes. You are. Absolutely love her. Like, there is just so much detail on Hikari as a character that I feel like she gets way more love and- I mean, look at she- she's thighs, dude. She is like the poster girl of this anime. It's the thighs and titties just straight into your face. Like, everything that is fan service, it's Hakari. Spotlight throughout this anime. Yeah, all of them kind of have equal amount of scenes. But, like, when you really take a hard look at just a lot of these different scenes that happen here, it's mm. just like- This is the spitting scene. She's about to spin and just show us her titties right now, look. Hikari just- Do it. Play it. I don't it. know, there, there is this, like, oomph, this life that- Yeah, maybe it's the thighs, the size of her thighs. It's just poured into every single one of her- I titties. see him. And I feel like there is definitely some bias going on on the staff, but, you know, personally, I love Hikari. She's a great character, and, I mean, the anime is really doing a fantastic job of just, I feel like, really getting off just how distinct her character is from the other two- you can just tell me, Chibi, that she's thick as fuck, bro. Has been introduced. I mean, she's basically like this girl that just is very down mm. bad. Like she is mm -hmm. legit, like the the, mm -hmm. the I guess great example of a down bad female character. And I mean, just her jumping for. <laughs> Yo, this scene was crazy. <laughs> she did like two spins and two. Boom! <laughs> it was so fluid emotions too. Holy shit. Enjoy this scene, like, bro. <laughs> bro. Bro, it's so, Yeah. It's so... I'm sure this is, like, an iconic panel in the manga, too, right? Shameless. Like, seeing this scene, it's just, like, I yep. cannot believe how shameless she is within... But here's the thing. Maybe this... And this is, like, a... Uh, this is, like, a testament to how degenerate my channel's become. But all the anime that we're watching right now, and all the animes that we've watched before in the past, so many different etchy and harem shows, like... Stuff like this doesn't even shock me anymore. This is pretty gentle. Like, high school DxD, you say right now, is literally double pressing into Rias's nipples so he can power up. When I see shit like this, like, 100 girlfriend doesn't even come close, right? But that's, that just pretty much means that I'm a degenerate, nothing more. In this anime. But okay, with that out of the way, let's, let's talk about a few things. So, this anime overall... Now that we're about, you know, four episodes deep into it, as you can see here, yeah. it's crazy. I can't believe we're already four weeks into this anime. Yeah. Where is time going, by the way? Four weeks where, of greatness. Where is it going? Like, it feels like it was just yesterday that this anime season started, but somehow we managed to make it four weeks deep already. But um, back on topic, though. This anime really is just... It is what every fan of any anime wants. Like... Pretty much the fantasy of any young boy, isn't it? And it's literally called a hundred girlfriends that really, 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 really love you. I feel like there's so many countless manga and anime, etc., out there that, like, when something gets adapted into an anime, people j can only dream of having an anime as good as this. Like, you know, oh, he's talking about the actual adaptation of the source material from like the light novel or whatever, the manga to like anime. So I guess the translation has been like really good. In terms of adapting the original source and bringing things to life, making it just elevated beyond what you ever would have imagined and honestly i would say in terms of like what i have seen so far from this you know in terms of 100 girlfriends and for clarification i only read to chapter like 28 30 or whatever of the i thought you were gonna say i've only read like 280 chapters but manga so i'm nowhere near close to update uh, updated of like the is this a super long running series it's gonna cover but the point of the matter is is that like Everything I've seen so far, it's just like, it's followed the manga to the, to the T, and it's actually even changed some of the gags that would only be fitting for the manga into anime-formed gags, like, you know, breaking the fourth wall. Like, a good example of this is this scene right here, where we have, you know, Shizuka and her whole circumstances of her not being able to talk. 
she just this is the part where like Rentaro is doing like the exposition recap and it's like you don't have to stop you, you can stop doing that right no Rentaro explains this to everyone and he uses it in a way it's like oh just watch the previous episode if you want to know and he breaks the fourth wall and the characters is like you can't be lazy just give us exposition I really like that it's really nice usage of just you know the comedy that um, 100 girlfriends normally has within its manga but kind of transforming it into you know anime comedy and I think that's really good because it's like one of the big concerns that many had, you know, when this got announced for an anime, was that could they properly adapt the comedy into the anime? Because there's that one panel everyone's scared of. It's the one panel of Rentaro, and it's just text everywhere. That's the entire panel. It's like, can they adapt this? There's a lot of comedy that is just manga jokes that could only work in manga. But the fact that, you know, it has been slowly transformed into something that would work in the anime format, once again shows the level of detail and the extra mile that the staff that is working on this show is really going to make this absolutely a banger anime for, you know, fall of anime 2023. But, um, yeah, I just, I'm really impressed, honestly. Like, I, I know I keep, you know, kind of singing this show's praises and all that, but if you're an anime only, I'm just gonna say... I know it's really tough probably not wanting to read ahead and see what's going to happen because this... That's the thing for me. It's like nothing... Like, I can't read manga anymore because if I read the manga, then I get spoiled for the anime reactions. So you guys probably already read ahead, but it's like... I'm just chilling. Anime is legit good. If you've made it four weeks in and you've been watching this, you're probably like, man, I, I really want to read the manga. I yeah. Just, I, I feel you. I... I, I I'm just waiting for Nano. Like, when the fuck is Nano showing up? I've been just waiting for this girl, Nano, to show up ever since the trailers dropped. Still getting teased. But I think next episode, she's actually going to show up. I understand that completely. Even me, as that's kind of already seen this content, kind of wants to go back and just reread all this again just because of, like, how good it is. It, it's legit good. And the manga is amazing. I'm not trying to say that it's completely inferior to the anime. I'm just saying the content that has been adapted really has just been super enjoyable. And bringing voice and movement to it is just, it's an experience that you can't... Emphasis on movement, especially with Hakari. ...can't really get in the same way as reading the manga. And so if you really have been enjoying the show, I recommend you sticking as anime only. It's It's been good. It has been a legitimately fantastic show it's honestly crazy how good this show is like it is up there is probably one of my top three favorite shows of this, this season? season yeah this season eminence and shadow 100 girlfriends i think those are the top two i'm most interested in in this season not even well t the thing about being an anime reaction channel is that obviously you're the once it turns into a business and like even series that you might not be enjoying, if they get a lot of views compared to others, you might enjoy it more because of the success. Right? And that's kind of with like, that's like the curse of content creation. It's like, even if it's like something you might not enjoy and it does well, you might think that it's better. Anyways, I still think Eminence in Shadow and 100 Girlfriends is still the best that I'm watching right now. It's been fun. But to be fair, I am a sucker for romance shows, etc. And since this show is a very unique take on the whole harem type genre of anime, Harem or harem? Anime and manga, it also has that going for it as well. Because normally you would have, you know, all the female characters, you know, fighting each other. Which kind of, a little bit does happen still in the series. But it's like, Look at this Giga Chat T-posing on the ground right now. Like, you know, they're all fighting for the attention of one male character. And, you know, the male character is like a beta male and doesn't understand the feelings that's being kind of, you know, thrown at him. But Rendoro is not that character. He's a guy that, you know, understands that they all love him. And he does anything he can to make sure all of them are happy, satisfied, and... It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Like, you know, this entire episode, you know, the main point of it, like, if we're really wanting to get into the nitty-gritty of what the actual plot of this episode was, it was about... What the fuck was the plot of the episode? We hung out with the girls on the rooftop. The entire episode was just hanging out with the girls on the rooftop. What did we even do? We introduced Shizuka. We did a little kuchu 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 kuchu. That was it. But it still was 20 minutes of goaded content. You know, Rintaro introducing, you know, Shizuka into the fold. Of, you know, <laughs> <basically> <laughs> <laughs> introducing her to the other two and allowing her to feel like she fits in and not feel inferior. Because yeah. this is definitely going to be an issue that is going to have to be tackled a lot. And, and there's like a really wholesome moment where Hakari and Karane actually supports, you know, uh, uh, Shizuka. And Karane, sorry, ka ka did I say Karane and Shizuka? <laughs> Karane and Hakari support Shizuka, but Karane like... 
Karane supports Shizuka in the weirdest way where she's like yelling at her and like she's like getting angry, but she's not angry. It's just how the Sundere speaks. So it's in a very hostile way, but in a very positive way. If you hear the words that she's saying, it's like, you should think better of yourself. Why don't you go for him more? You should do what makes you happy. In like a really angry way. It's like, Jesus, are you angry at me? Let's just, let's dive head first into that. Basically, from everything we know, from what the plot is obviously established to this very point, is that Rindoro is going to have 100 different girlfriends. Hell, yeah, it's the title. 100. It's literally the title of the series. 100. And it's like, he's going to have to juggle 100 different people and love towards them, which... Honestly, and realistically, that's impossible. But uh, this is obviously not trying to be realistic. It's breaking the fourth wall. It's meant to be fun, comedy, and just... Yeah, well, part of it is, uh, of course, of course, it's not being realistic. Like, if you fucking ignore one girl, she will die. And I wonder if that plot point will become important in the future. Will a goofy show like this actually delve into people dying because Rentaro forgot to, like, give him the love and attention? I don't think so, right? Showing that this one man has just so much love to give. It's just universal level. ED calls the girls by numbers. He's not even trying to remember the name. Based. He's calling them one, two, and three. <laughs> My man, ED. Like, if we're doing power scaling of love, like, you know how people love doing, like, power scaling of, like, shonen characters like Goku versus Superman? Power scaling of love? Or whatever. Basically, Rindaro would be the strongest entity. In oh, God. I thought, I thought we were power scaling the waifus for a second. Never mind. In the romance verse. Like, he is overwhelmingly strong with his loves. Can you guys think of a rom-com character who is stronger than Rentaro in this power scaling of the rom-com universe? I honestly... Issei's kind of up there, right? Hyodo Issei, I mean, he's, he's a harem king, and we're not even finished DXD yet, but I'm sure he's gonna get even crazier, but... Yeah, I mean, any harem show or any prominent main character who's like a Giga Chad, I think Issei would be up there, right? So, with all that considered, I think that he would just solo any other romance genre. Like, you know, in terms of just the love that he can give others. Like, we're just scaling love. He definitely is probably the highest, at least that I am currently aware of. Now, if there's anyone... He's power scaling, fuck. <laughs> the way Jamie's talking about power scaling, dude. <laughs> Protagonist from rom-com series is so silly, but I love it. What else I could potentially compete with him? Do let me know in the comments below. The only characters I can say that could potentially compete with him is not a romance genre, but in terms of love, I guess it'd be Satwa from ReZero, if anyone knows more about No, 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 no ReZero spoilers! No ReZero spoilers! No, 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 But if you don't know, well... No, 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 Anyways. Okay, good. Point of the matter we will watch ReZero soon. I don't know when, but we will. Is, is that Rentaro, he's trying to allow Shizuka to fit in, to allow her to feel like she belongs and she's not inferior. And this is definitely going to be a theme that could potentially pop up time and time again when a new female character gets introduced to fall in love with Rentaro. Because, I mean, you're going to have to, like, when he gets to, let's just say, the 56 girl or whatever, okay? Are we going to remember Hakari and Karane by the 56 girl? I feel like... At a certain point, your brain can only remember so much. Like, us as the audience, I think the recency bias of the first, like, 5 to 10 girls is going to be the limit. I, I don't know, no, man. she's going to be like, wow, there's 55 before me. You know, uh, do you really care about me? You know, do you really think that you can actually share? <laughs> Bitch, what do you want me to do? Not care about you? Fine. Then I'll just be on my way. Then you will die, though, because that is the curse. Error some form of attention on me after you already have it 55 others you know you you can imagine this is the conversation that is going to appear it's eventually going to appear once again but tackling this very early on just showcases the level of dedication that yeah. you know rentaro is trying to do but also it's two ways right rentaro quickly notices that shizuka is getting a lot of attention and then hakari and kanane might be getting jealous so he steps out he says that i need to go take a fat shit goodbye guys and then the girls, like, sorted out by themselves. But it's not even... And then, the two points is, not only is Rentaro so appreciative, so are the girls, because Hakari and Kanane, they start to realize that Shizuka is also part of the girlfriend gang, and they want to support her no matter what, because she's so small and fluffy. So, there's, like, no infighting, and everyone really cares about each other. And it's just a lovey-dovey, mushy story. So, the writer of the series as well, and let, let's talk about that, okay? One of the big details that, you know, this episode actually does, and I think that really a lot of people don't realize, yeah. Which part? is that Rintoro points out, like, all their very distinct personality traits that even themselves... Yeah, that felt like breaking the fourth wall, like the author telling me, hey, this is this specific archetype, you know, this is the classic Cinderay, this is the classic lolly headpad girl, this is big booba girl. Weren't really aware. Hakari is more than big booba girl, but you know. Like, you know, she's a, she's an individual that, you know, 
She, like, moves her feet depending on the emotion she has when she's reading something. Oh, Akari the little tappy taps! That puts her finger to her mouth and all that. And then Kanane is the hair twirls, yeah. Very, like, lewd way. And then we have our favorite Soon Soon, where she basically, like, she starts twisting her hair, you know, mm -hmm. if there's something going on or she's in deep thought or whatever. So they all have their very distinct character traits. And, and also, as I already talked about in the first episode, you know, Hikari here, she has a little mole literally on her thigh near... Upper right thigh by her ass cheek. It's there. It's there. If you don't trust me, go to the previous episode. It's there. Uh, you know, the butt region, so to speak. And every time there is a, like, some form of shot on her legs, you actually see yep. You see the yep. butt. And there's these little things that are put in onto these characters that are very subtle and appear throughout the anime. Even the anime has shown it already time and time again. And it's like the extra level here that not just the animators doing, but the writer has to do is insane. And let, let's kind of break this down, okay? Once again, it's easy to point out these little different characteristics of these personalities, especially since it's only three characters. But this is a consistent thing that happens throughout the manga, at least from what I read. The mole? Rizoro notices these little traits of individual characters. Well, I think a lot of girls love... Especially, like, if you notice the small little things that they do, it really makes them feel like, oh, wow, they really appreciate me. They would notice such small details about my life. That means that you truly do care about me. So obviously this plays into the story of... Well, he's going to have 100 girlfriends. How is he going to maintain all of them and make sure that they all feel loved? So this is like a fun way to really point out one of their quirks and for them to then nut and say, Oh my God, he loves me so much. And the author has to remember this. Imagine this, okay? You're a writer of a series and you have to juggle 50 characters, 100 characters, and all their differences of personality, the little things that they do that are it's very distinct or different from the other, that's basically what Rintaro and the author has to do. That is an insane feat. It is legitimately an impressive feat to be able to... I don't know if it's going to be possible to, right? Because the manga still hasn't even covered 100 girlfriends. I'm pretty sure the manga... I'm not sure if it's right, but didn't someone say they're only like 20-something right now? Juggle that many characters and to remember their individual things that really separate them from the others. So, just impressive, honestly, nonetheless. If we're not even factoring in the love that Rintaro has for individuals of, like, you know, his girlfriends and all that, you know, he is insane, but so is the writer. That that insanity is just leaked into Rintaro. But, uh... Over I'm just waiting for Chibi to make a comment about Rentaro's Giga Chad eyebrows, bro. Look how masculine and bushy they are. For all though, this episode is legit good. The main point of it, like I said, is to allow Shizuka to feel like she belongs. And, uh -huh. you know, this is kind of set up for clearly for the future of, like, you know, how they're probably going to handle, you know, future girlfriends that join in. Nano, where is she? Into the fray. It's going to be settled amongst themselves. Rentaro won't really try to jump in and silence them to really correct the problem. Sometimes he might. It depends on the circumstance. But overall, he wants them to be able to express themselves and, like, be themselves. He doesn't want them to hide what they truly feel. He wants them to actually be who they really are and be happy. So he's a really good boyfriend. He's legitimately just an incredible character. He is like an actual role model. People call him like a walking green flag. Everything he does is actually so good. There is nothing, there is not a single fault to him. Which then makes you question, how the fuck did he get rejected a hundred times before? Well, you know, for the sake of the show, because it's the whole thing of, oh, you, you get a hundred pity system. Now the god's like, all right, you're going to get a hundred girlfriends now. But you really think about it. Who the fuck would reject a guy like Rentaro back then? I mean, once again, he's not realistic. He's not trying to be realistic. This Neither are those eyebrows. The series is not trying to be realistic. Of course not. A girl will fucking die if you neglect them. Of course not. It's just, it's fun. It's a very yeah. core essence, fun series. Yeah. And I think that's what really drives a lot of people to enjoy 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. But I think he said five release. They're good. But um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Another dub video from Chibi as always. Please go subscribe to his channel if you haven't. Like this video if you did. But I think this anime, again, is one of my favorites this season. Competing with Eminence in Shadow. There's just something so fun about a rom-com that is not melodramatic. There were some dramatic moments in Shizuka, but an anime like this compared to, let's say, Kaguya-sama or Tomo-chan as a girlfriend, where everything is so fast-paced, nonsensical fun, still hits the romantic tones, but overall, a lot of comedy involved. I love shit like this, and I recommend everybody to watch 100 Girlfriends.